It's Brian Preston, the money guy. This first one, uh, I don't want to say I picked him because or her because of the name, but the name was pretty good. This is from Foo, uh, F-O-O, all capitals, Manchu. Oh, Foo Manchu. Uh, looking for advice on HSA investments. Uh, currently, I'm 100% equities because we're treating it like an IRA. Now we have a baby on the way, and I'll probably end up tapping it each year. Should I stick to cash? How should I think about my HSA investments? So, Brian, talk a little bit about... One, he said something interesting there, uh, turning into an IRA. I think that's an interesting thing to, to talk about. And then how should you allocate an HSA from an investment standpoint? And does it change depending on life cycle and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, this, this is a great question. And we love HSAs just to catch people up when this goes out as a highlight. We love HSAs because they are in that step five of the financial order of operations. That's why we love Fu Manchu's name, because it is part of the Fu. Of the step Foo. five is tax-free growth. We love that HSAs, just like Roth IRAs, HSAs have the opportunity to grow completely tax-free. And they're triple tax advantage, meaning that when you fund an HSA, it is tax deductible. You get a deduction. It grows tax deferred, meaning that while it's invested, that money is growing. You're not paying taxes on an annual basis. And then if you use it for qualified medical expenses and health care, it will be distributed completely tax free. That's why we say it's triple tax mm-hmm. advantage. Now, Fu Manchu had a question here. He said, look, I have been investing. I'm part of the 4%, not the 96% that use this as a clearing account where I put it in, take the tax deduction, but then immediately reimburse myself. Fu Manchu is actually part of the 4% that has invested that mm-hmm. money so they can That's take right. advantage of all three components of the triple tax advantage. But life's changing. Baby's on the way. So trying to figure out how does this all work with this, this investing strategy. So I want to back up on something. This is kind of a review course here on, on using good use of HSAs and in investing. Remember, I want your HSA. If you or somebody who knows you're going to use it as a clearing account, there's nothing wrong before you start investing to fill up either you, you have to choose is it the deductible or is it the out-of-pocket maximum Mm -hmm. for your family, because realize every health savings account has a requirement. It has to be part of a high-deductible health insurance plan. And those plans, and this is why you have tax savings on on your contributions, but also the cost of the premiums, is because more of the responsibilities actually go fall on your shoulders for your health care. So it it's really turns health insurance into a discount program right. more than it is a reimbursement program. Because I've been on a health savings account for years. I, I was, I was going to try to put a date on it, but it's been a number of years now. And I don't think in the last three to four years... Um, and we have a lot of healthcare expenses. Sure. I don't think I've gotten that much reimbursement whatsoever because you're usually just trying to fill up the deductibles. Mm-hmm. You're trying to fill up the out of pockets. So a lot of it's going to fall on you. So if you're especially if you're having a baby or things like Fu Manchu talked about, you know more is going to fall on you. And if you can't f- afford to just collect those receipts, you know, and then reimburse yourself sometime in the future after you've had years of compounding growth, mm-hmm. then I would definitely lean into. You making that decision on deductibles or out of pockets, and then invest above and beyond that. Because remember, you are contributing every year mm-hmm. to this plan, and hopefully, you don't have such high medical expenses that it's wiping out that seventy one hundred dollars or whatever the family maximum is for you. For you know, in the ta- whenever tax year you watch this video, um, so it, it is replenishing. But you at least need to have enough money to cover that first year's deductible or out of pocket, whatever your comfort level is. And I don't think, you know, because Fu Manchu, you mentioned that you've got a baby on the way. I don't think it's crazy to think about altering your HSA strategy depending on your stage of life. Perhaps you were a young person who didn't have any medical expenses, and so you're just dumping in those HSA dollars. Yeah, get those invested. Have an equity side portfolio. Have those dollars growing. But then as you start thinking about, okay, well, I'm going to have a family and babies and sniffles and bumps and boo-boos and all that kind of stuff. Okay, maybe I want to shift my allocation. Or maybe I do want to have a little more cash in there to cover exactly like you said, the deductible out-of-pocket max. It's okay to change. That's one of the beautiful things about finances. It's sort of a, it's a journey. It's a path that changes based on what's going on in our lives. Um, Fu Manchu, great question, great name. Uh, and congratulations on the new baby. That's super awesome. Ditto.